Okay, cool. And three, two, one. Hey, everyone. I'm your host, Jared Samuels, and welcome to the 20th episode of What's Behind the Game, where you'll get an exclusive look at all your favorite athletes eat, train, and anything else you'd like to know. Today on the show, we have Ashton Zamzow, a track athlete for the University of Texas, a hook'em, and one of the best <laughs> track athletes in the country. So let's welcome Ashton. Hello. Thanks for coming on. Um, so my first question is, let's go back to the beginning. Uh, what sports did you play growing up? Um, I ran track. And, and played what? Volleyball. All right, and at what point um, did you choose track over volleyball, or were you just... Um, I'm not friends with track runners, so I kind of knew I'd be better at running track than I would play volleyball. I mean, I, I'm not six foot tall, so that kind of, you know, narrows down what I can do at college. Yeah. yeah. Um, when did you start doing, like, the heptathlon? And for those that aren't familiar with track, what goes into that? So the heptathlon is seven events in two days. Um, it's four events the first day and three events the second day. And the first event or the first day includes the 100 hurdles, the high jump, shot put, and the 200. And the next day is long jump, javelin, and the 800, um, all consecutive. So you get 30 minutes break between each event after you complete it. And you get points for how well you do in each event. And at the end of the second day, all your points are added. And the winner with or the one with the most points wins. So that's what the heptathlon is. Awesome. And, <laughs> a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. it's, I started doing it when I was a junior in high school. I, I first started doing track when I was about five years old. So I always did it when I was, since I was little. And um, there's different kinds of multi, I guess, groups. As you get older, you kind of add more events to each, I guess, group. And the first one I did was a pentathlon, which is just five. And then I kind of developed into the heptathlon. Um, so I did my first hep when I was a junior and just kept doing it since then and got a scholarship for it. And um, here I am <laughs> still doing it. Right. Yeah. Um, so you started out at a and um, What schools were you considering at the time and why did you choose a and um, I wanted to stay local. I'm from local. Texas. And although Arkansas and and Oregon and Georgia were, you know, always a fun school to, to look at and, and to train. And I, I definitely wanted to stay in Texas. So I, A&M um, and Texas were kind of like my only choices, especially since my parents were um, track athletes at A&M. And um, so that was obviously a favorite, <laughs> the favorite school. And how did you transition from high school to college? What was that? What was that like? Um, you know, that, that was hard. It was um, all your time, uh, money, hours spent was, was for track and for school. Um, you are in class studying or you're out of the track, training your butt off in the heat. So you have to really love what you're doing or it's going to drive you crazy. <laughs> and, yeah. and I loved it, so I never got tired of it. How often do you all spend outdoors versus indoors? Um, so we are limited, or we have to be in at least twelve hours of school uh, per semester, and so that's usually two classes a day. Um, and as far as like working out, it, it could range from two to four hours just being outside, and then not including like lifting and and rehab and training um, inside in case you know you're hurt or need to take care of yourself after practice if you're not feeling good so it, I mean, it depends <laughs> on the day but yeah um so who transferred to ut was it difficult making that transition from one school to another oh absolutely i was torn to begin with out of high school i took two visits and i i wanted to go to ut but my parents were kind of you know um it was important for me for them to also be involved in the decision because I love them so much and I didn't want to disappoint them. So I went to A&M and I, I didn't like it. I, I thought I would just because my parents did and I didn't. So I transferred and that wasn't easy for any of us. And um, I kind of became a big girl when I did that and kind of just decided this was best for me. And, and, 
ended up being true and I'm a lot happier and successful and I don't regret what I did and and I'm thankful for all the friends and um, coaches I've made through the process. What role did your teammates play in like accepting you into the, the fold? Um, well, uh, my boyfriend at the time, or still is, uh, was on the team. So that kind of made it easy. I was always kind of around Texas track and field team because of him. And so that was pretty easy to transition into. I already knew everybody and it was kind of fun, you know, getting to finally hang out with a group of people that you've always wanted to be around and um, to succeed around, I guess, especially in um, the event you love so much. Cool. Um, we touched on a little bit, but what are some of the biggest challenges you've had to face as a student athlete? Oh, time management. Or, yeah. <laughs> time management is by far the hardest just because you're, you're spending so many hours outside or rehabbing and so many hours in school. And then you're required to go to study hall for two or three hours. And so you really have to just manage your day and break it up and, and realize you got to get crap done in order to be successful, especially if you want to uh, do well in, in school and um, do well in, uh, in sports too. So that was the hardest. Do you think uh, now is just kind of like a routine, right? So you can yeah, now it's easy well. because yeah, I'm so used to it. I'm, this is my fifth year because I uh, had to redshirt a year because I tore my hamstring. But um, I still graduated in four years, so it made this this last year of school kind of easy for me because um, I just took some some classes that I was interested in and uh, fo focused more on track than, than um, really hammering school. So that was a lot easier. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so going back to the track, out of all of the events you do, which one is your favorite one? Uh, favorite? You have one. <laughs> I think the high jump, just because um, it's so technical. Uh, even though I'm, I'm better in the jab, in the javelin, um, that one just comes so natural. I really don't have to think about it. But the high jump is, is just a little bit of everything. It's like you got to be good at it. You got to have some hops, but you also know how to. You have to figure out how to control it and and use it to clear bars over your head, <laughs> a couple inches over your head. So it's it's really fun to figure that out and um, and to be good at it. So that one I think is my favorite. How do you, so this is kind of a broad question, but how do you train for the different events? Like, is it one event one day, one event the next day? Uh, well, if it was one event a day, I probably wouldn't get much done. So that's, I, there's, the reason I'm outside for so long is because I spend, um, well, I do probably two or three events a day and uh, leave a day for kind of recovery and um, reset and then get back at it the next few days and um, that kind of keeps me motivated and healthy and, and if you have a bad event you can just move on to the next event that same day and it could still be okay <laughs> or just sometimes just today's not a good day and um, that's okay too but yeah it's it's two or three events a day and and um, I don't know it's, it's a lot sometimes and sometimes it's just like Man, that was easy. <laughs> just it depends on what time of the season you're in. You know, if it's fall season, you're you're kind of just killing yourself every day trying to get in shape. But um, spring season is when competitions begin, and you start kind of freshening up and t and taking off the um, the pounding and and all the running, and and it becomes you know a lot funner because <laughs> you're in competition mode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What are some example drills that you all do? Some drills. Um, well, depending on the event, like for her, we'll do some uh, hurdle drills, uh, trail leg drills, and lead leg drills, and then like we'll go over eight to ten hurdles, kind of spaced close together, just to work on um, speed and and uh, getting ready for I guess longer finishing longer races because indoor it's only five hurdles since it's uh, sixty meter hurdles and outdoor mm -hmm. 10. So kind of making that transition into going over longer hurdles and then high jump, just a lot of jumping. Same for long jump, drop put. It's just learning how to throw the ball without <laughs> having it throw you. And, and um, yeah. you know, it's just a lot of different things. Med ball stuff just for strengthening and, and um, uh, just 
to kind of get your muscles used to throwing a lot. So that helps a lot. I, I miss that. But anyways. I think you said you tore your hamstring. What was it like coming back from that, especially with all the jumping? and? Yeah, I, like I struggle with it every day, honestly. Um, I don't think – well, going through that was hard in itself because you, you, you train all year just to compete and then you're t kind of taken out the whole year. And so having to reset and recover and train for the next year, um, that requires a lot of patience and kind of sacrifice. And um, But coming, like recovering to start competing again, it's uh, it was hard because you have some – scar tissue that's left after you tear a muscle say you tear a muscle it's not straight anymore it's kind of crooked it lays down and so mm -hmm. and they have to dig on it and and break it up every day so that it just kind of straightens out and um i don't tear it again per se um so it's it's kind of a challenge to to deal with every day if it's if it's tight or if it's nagging at me i just like okay coach i can't do this today um and that's been one of the the biggest um, improvements I think that I've made for myself is, is taking care of my health. And I think that's kind of what's made this season so successful is because I've been able to go out and practice and kind of know my limits, um, of what I can do, what I can't do and, and get better from there or just work around it. And that's, I guess what's helped so much. Yeah. When you, um, how often, like, like when you all are, out of practice or whatever. How often is a coach there? Oh, all the or how time. often are you doing? Yeah, time? all the time. Yeah, they're always there. They have a longer day than we do. I feel like <laughs> they're there from the morning all the way to late at night. Cause we, I mean, we have meetings at like six thirty seven, depending on what's going on sometimes. And I'm just, I'm thankful for such a committed staff. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Uh, what role does like nutrition and strength training and everything you do off the track play oh, so important um because track is such a, a a physical kind of uh i don't know how to explain this it's a it's all kind of based on your physical like well-being and if you're not um ready to run at 800 you know as fast as you can um, you either need to look at the workouts you're doing or the diet you're on or the, um, you know, how, how strong you need to be in order to, to throw this far. So it's, it's definitely it all intertwines together because I, you want to be at the peak, uh, at your peak physical, I don't know, self uh, at all the time. And so it, it's important to get the right nutrients, the right um, food, the right vitamins every day just so that your body is kind of prepared to to take on max training every day which is so different from other events or other sports even just because um you get like your um you're training at like max velocity every day like it's, it's always the results are always like immediate whether you're jumping at a bar you're like okay i cleared 5 a today like, how did I feel? I, I could have done better, I feel like, if I wasn't um, uh, feeling bad about eating this fried chicken I just had or or I didn't get, like, mm -hmm. I got five hours of sleep last night, so I didn't recover all the way. Or It's always, like, trying to feel as fresh as possible so that you can um, compete your best. And that's kind of also a hard thing to learn about what your body best, uh, I don't know, kind of learns and, and, and adapts to. Mm -hmm. I yeah. bet dealing with like the stress of school if that back away on you or yeah, just a lot. Um, just kind of being tired from studying, it just kind of takes a stress and, and toll on on that too. And sometimes you just don't even want to practice. You're like I'm so tired from taking this final. I don't want to go outside and do a workout right now. I'm exhausted. And um, you know some. Some of the event groups go in the weight room at like 5 36 in the morning and i'm like oh my gosh i need my sleep i can't do that <laughs> so it's, it's hard for um for a lot of reasons but you know if you love it as much as i do it, it kind of makes it worth it in the end um so on a race day when you're like preparing for a typical event do you have like a routine you go through um, kind of well i do the normal warm-up 
um, depending on what event I do. But if I'm doing a HEP, then I just get ready for the hurdles like I normally do. I, I shake out, uh, roll out, um, loosen, loosen up if anything's tight, and go over some hurdles. Usually takes me about like an hour and a half to get ready for that because it's such a technical event. And usually a lot of girls are on the track at the same time trying to go over hurdles. So you just got to be patient. And, um, yeah, no, that's that's I, that's kind of it. That's my routine. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Anything to get your mind right, or is just like being there. You, you know, a lot of people right. listen to music, but I just kind of I like to to hear what's going on outside and get a feel for the weather um, or just the environment, and and to kind of feed off of that energy instead of um, something that's just. You could put some earphones on and kind of not be real, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So you competed at like the really big events, the Big 12 Championships, which I think were pretty recently, yeah. NCAA, mm -hmm. Team USA. How do you handle like the really big stages? Is it, does it feel different or is it just like, hey, I've done this? Um, the environment's right different. Here. Yeah. And at first, you're super, super, super nervous. Um, but I kind of got used to it after I kind of, took the um, stress of, of performing well out of the equation. I just chose uh, to just have fun and to compete against these girls and try to kick butt. <laughs> and that kind of relieves all the stress and, and the mental just anxiety I would have normally for the events. And um, that's helped me a lot just to kind of be at peace with um, – the competition, I guess, because it's, you know, such a high class, like high level environment with the yeah. pros and, and stuff. And so, yeah, it's nerve wracking and, and you get some nerves in the block before the gun goes off. But it's it's always exciting and um, never kind of, um, I don't know, not 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 too, too crazy. I did let that get to me the first few years and I ended up not doing very well and and. I'm realizing now, like, it. what's the point? <laughs> you're, you're there to yeah. compete and, and have fun, and you might as well just do it with a smile on your face. And, and it's been, I mean, working out for, for me well so far. <laughs> I just am starting yeah, yeah. to enjoy it and, and not put any expectations on myself. And, um, and I'm kind of realizing how good I am. And it's kind of like a surprise. <laughs> Because I, I knew I could be, um, you know, on Team USA um, competing in different um, countries or or getting third at nationals indoor without my best event, which is the javelin. You only throw that outdoors. And, and now that I'm ranked number one in the nation, it's like I still kind of don't – it hasn't processed yet. And I don't want it to because I don't want it to, you know, make me too overconfident. Or, yeah, and, and so I – just kind of taking it one step at a time and just keep trying to improving on each event and to worry about getting to my best self, whatever that may be each day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does going professional, would that be the next step? Yeah. Or, yeah, absolutely. Um, and that, that'll that be this summer. There's a uh, national this next week in Austin here at home. And then oh, really? there's a USA um, track and field championships. And that's with the pros. And about a month after that is the 27th and 28th of um, July. So I'll be competing there uh, with the rest of the nation um, and, and pros and stuff. And so that'll be fun. I'm excited to see what um, we could do so far. I think I'm right now I'm ranked third um, overall for uh, the U.S. for um, the women's hat um, outside of college. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be good. Sweet. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so you're like the really school record holder in the pentathlon. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, the first female athlete in, yeah, at UT to win at the Big 12 in a pentathlon. Mm -hmm. Is it Bowerman? I want to make sure I get that right. Bowerman, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. What do those athletes mean to you? And like, maybe you touched on a little bit, but like, yeah. Um, so basically, whenever I went to um, Nationals Indoor, I was top eight. And when you're top eight, you receive this accolade called an All-American. And so that just means you are um, you finish top eight at Nationals. And it's such a, 
a special, I guess, name or, or gift only granted for those just elite athletes who can accomplish that. And that to me is like the best um, accolade I could ever receive just because I've been wanting it for so long and it's taken me five years to get it. And um, hopefully, you know, next week I get another all American um, name added to it and be two time all American instead of just one time. But uh, that is, was, you know, my most important uh, accolade. And then, um, I'm sorry, what's the other ones that you were, oh, the Bowerman. Oh my gosh. That's, that's like the track version of the Heisman trophy. If you know what that is, yeah. that's insane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's for like five time national champions. And, and so to, to be put on that list, I'm like, what the heck <laughs> I didn't <laughs> that good of a score, but I guess it was because it was number, um, one in the world for a long time until this past weekend. Um, mm. my, my performance. And, and that was just such a bizarre thing to even, um, look back on it and, and kind of realize like, wow, I did, I did do that. And, um, that's, if I win that, I mean, that's just tops it all. It's like the, the best of the best, you know, if you win the bar and you're, you're getting a, a contract with some of the bigger, um, agencies and, and, you're looking at a pro life for a long time, a pro athlete life for a long time. So that's exciting. Um, but there's, you know, some really good competition out there. And, and I'm just thankful to even be on the list, really, to be watched. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like you said all that just gives you more confidence in yourself. Yeah, it does. Reassurance that everything's going to, I mean, yeah, just everything, just a blessing. <laughs> it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Well, there's a question that we ask at the end for everyone, and it's what are your top three recommendations for young athletes? Top three recommendations. Um, first one would be to work hard. Um, never cut yourself short because you're you just don't want to do it or you don't feel like it or you're just not giving yourself the chance or even an opportunity to get better that day. So always work hard. Um, cause it got me honestly to where I am now. And the second thing would be to dream big. Um, I, I never did this for myself. I kind of just took each opportunity as it came. And, and lately it's kind of been like, you're better than what you think you are. And so I want to encourage, you know, younger athletes to, to, to dream outside the box of what they think they're capable of doing, because that's honestly, I wish I would have done that. Cause I, I, um, I feel like I could have been a better athlete because of that. I would have given myself more opportunities and chances to be, um, to be better. And, um, the third thing, um, would be to, to take care of yourself. <laughs> um, health is such an important, um, part of being successful. People don't realize like you spend two hours outside training, like, well, you better spend an hour in, in the, the rehab or getting treatment, you know, trying to make yourself a hundred percent for the next day. And, um, and I mean, you don't realize how many athletes will suffer from injuries and, and just have them taken out for their season or, or for the rest of, you know, their careers because of one little injury, you know, and they have to have surgery and all this stuff. So taking care of your body and, and just your health is, is number three. Top. Of course.